Good evening. Thank you for joining in to listen. Are you going through a, a valley uh, or maybe a battle? Are you going through a, a period in your life that you prefer not to be going through? Maybe stress, work pressures, bereavement, illness, loneliness. Maybe you're struggling with COVID. I've got to say at the outset that I've never really had to go through many uh, valleys in my life. And, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. I have come through uh, COVID last week. And yes, went through a valley uh, for a day or two. Uh, but to be honest, it, it, it wasn't too difficult. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that it's been a lot more difficult for a lot of others. There are many uh, in our land going through difficulties in life at this time. And tonight, I want to speak to you about a man who came through a valley and came out victorious. In fact, I want to tell you about two men who went through a valley and came out victorious. The outcome for one of the men could have been very different, but because he fully trusted in God and God was on his side, he came out victorious. The other man was Jesus, God in person. He went through uh, numerous valleys for you and for me. He has nail prints on his hands and his feet, he has wounds on his side, scars on his head, but he too uh, came out victorious. For me, that is special. I suppose I ask you the question uh, this evening, is it special to you? If it's not, then I trust and pray But at the end of this 15-minute simple gospel message. I hope and pray uh, that it is special and that Jesus Christ becomes uh, special to you. The story I want to uh, briefly touch on is the story of David and Goliath, a well-known Bible story uh, which, which many, if not all of you, will know. The story can be found in the Old Testament in 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm not going to read it, read the whole story out tonight. It was over, over 50 verses. So I'll do my best uh, to summarize it and pull some points uh, from it that I'd like to focus on. Slide one uh, I've, I've, I've just put up on the screen of, of two slides tonight. First slide I've, I've shown, and there are, there are four parts of the story that I want to focus on. The background, the Philistines and their mighty warrior Goliath, the Israelites, and David, the shepherd's boy. The background, first of all, the first few verses of Samuel 17 give us the background. And if you have a Bible, by all means, turn to Samuel 17 and, and you can follow the story through with me. First Samuel 17. It tells us that the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were placed on one hill. They had a mighty warrior in their ranks and his name was Goliath. Verses four to seven give us a really detailed description of this man, Goliath. Verse four tells us he was an undefeated champion and that he was approximately nine and a half feet tall. Verse five tells us his armor weighed about 70 kgs that's about the weight of three bags of cement or three bags of meal. It says his first, or sorry, his spear weighs about nine kilos, I think in verse five. This was not a man uh, to be messing with. He was a beast of a man. Going by external appearance, appearances, he was a man you'd want in your army. And he was the main man in the Philistines' army. It's good to be reminded that Man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. The Bible tells us that. In fact, it tells us that in a, in a few chapters previous uh, to Samuel chapter 17. I should ask you a question at this point. Is your heart right before God? Bearing in mind, God, the Lord, looketh on the heart, not on the external appearances. He doesn't uh, look at what type of car you drive. He doesn't look at what type of house you have. He doesn't look at how you're living your life either. He looks at your heart. That's the first challenge for tonight. 
On, on the other hill, I just get back to the background, on the other hill you had the Israelites. They were led by a king called Saul. Saul was the first king of Israel, and they too were set and ready for battle. So you had the Philistines' army in one hill, and you had the Israelites' army on the other hill. And notice verse 3 on the screen, it tells us there was a valley in between them. So you had the Philistines in one hill with Goliath, and you had uh, the Israelites with Saul on the other hill, both armies ready for battle. The Philistines. So we'll just look at the, the Philistines a little more closely. Remember, they had the undefeated champion in their ranks. Uh, we've already looked at how he was a giant of a man being over nine foot tall. His name was Goliath. The Bible tells us that he came down into the valley and presented himself before Israel morning and night for 40 days. That's 80 times, 40 days by two, 80 times at least, shouting in a loud voice for one of the Israelites to come down and fight him. The Philistines were very much on the front foot in this battle. They were bringing the battle to the Israelites, or so they thought with this mighty warrior on their side. The Israelites then, in comparison, verse 11 of chapter 17 tells us that Saul, that's their leader and king, and the Israelites were dismayed, they were discouraged and greatly afraid. Verse 24 says they fled and were sore afraid. Remember, this is the nation that had God on their side, but they had chosen to turn their back on God. That reminds me so much of today. We have put God to the side in so many situations. We have chosen our way and either forgot about God or chosen to put him out of our minds, or worse, we have turned our backs towards God. How foolish uh, we have been. And, you know, as I, I read through this and I studied it, if ever there was a time in my lifetime where we needed God in our land, it's now. But yet we still choose to turn away from him. At the best, we turn to him whenever things get out of control. But as soon as we gain some form of control back again, we turn away from him again. I, I have even seen it, and you have maybe seen it, uh, through COVID. In March, April, people were sitting up, maybe more aware of God, uh, more aware of church. And then as, as, as COVID went on, and um, we started to maybe gain some control or think we were gaining some control, people started to turn their backs very quickly on God again. Could I say, although the Israelites had forgotten about God, God had not forgotten about them. God sent them a shepherd's boy by the name of David. You know, even, even though many of us have turned our backs on God, God has not forgotten about us. God is there waiting for you to come to him. Finally, point four, then there was David, the shepherd boy. David was a shepherd boy who attended to the native sheep. Uh, we all know that in Northern Ireland, we tend to many sheep. There's many sheep farmers. But in, in obedience to his father, Jesse, he took a bag of corn, 10 loaves, 10 cheeses to the Israelite army, where his three brothers had followed Saul to battle. His three older brothers. In fact, there's eight in that family, and it was the three oldest brothers that had went to battle with Saul. I don't have time to go into the detail of the full story, but whilst David was delivering this food to his brothers, he seen Goliath come out and shout for the battle. David then seen that the Israel army, his brothers were fighting for, fled and ran back into their tents. David couldn't believe it. David was amazed. And his first response was, who is this Philistine that he should challenge the armies? Of the living God. David went to Saul the king, see the last verse on the slide, and said, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight this Philistine. So so David he really presented himself before the, the king and said, Don't let this man Goliath's heart fail, or let no man's heart fail because of this man Goliath. I'll go and fight this Philistine. 
Both Saul and his brothers tried to talk David out of it, but David was so confident that the Lord would deliver him out of the hand of the Philistine. You see, David's trust was in the Lord. Verse 38 and 39 tells us how Saul put armor on David similar to Goliath's, but David refused in that he had not proved the army, armor. You see, David had proved God in his life, and he knew God was sufficient without the weight of armor. And so it was, David took his shepherd's staff in his hand. He chose five smooth stones out of the brook, put them in his shepherd's bag with a sling in his hand. David proceeded down to the valley to meet Goliath. And in response to Goliath's shouts and threats, David could say, I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. Verse 47, he could say, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Verse 48 says that David ran towards the Philistines. He put his, he put his hand on his bag. He took out a stone and slung it with a sling, and it smote Goliath in his forehead, and Goliath fell on his face dead. When the Philistine army seen their champion dead, they fled, and when the Israelites seen it, they rose and shouted, and pursued the Philistines. What a change. The last, you see, was depending on his own strength. David was depending on God's strength. In life, I ask you another question. Whose strength are you depending on? To finish, I'd like to now just look at how David, in one way, typifies the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at some parallels. I've I've seven parallels. I'm sure there are there are loads more, but I'll just take time to, to look at seven. Just like God sent David uh, to save the Israelites in battle, God sent Jesus, his son, to this earth to save you. Just like David was obedient onto his onto his father uh, Jesse. Remember, Jesse told him uh, to go to the battle and, and, and give his sons the, the cheese, the bread, and the corn. Jesus was obedience, obedient to God's will. Just like David stepped forward into battle, Jesus stepped forward and allowed himself to be arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane to, so he could be taken and tried in a mock trial to ultimately end up on a cross. Just like the Israelites fled and hid in their tents, the disciples fled from Christ after his arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane. I'm not criticizing the disciples. I probably would have done the same myself. I'm just merely pointing out the fact that Jesus was alone. He suffered alone. Just like David fought the battle for the Israelites and went through the valley, Jesus fought the battle for us at the cross of Calvary and went through the valley of death. You see, our enemy is sin. Isaiah 53, verse 6, is on the screen, says, All we, like sheep, that's us, have gone astray. We, that's us again, have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him, that's Jesus, the iniquity, the sin, our sin of us all. Jesus shed his precious blood at Calvary for the forgiving of our sins. Ephesians 1 verse 7, it's on the screen also, it tells us that it's only through the shedding of Jesus' blood we can have forgiveness of sins. Just like David defeated the enemy, Jesus defeated sin for us at the cross. The sixth cry on the cross was, it is finished. There were seven. The sixth one was, Christ cried out, it is finished. And you ask, what was finished? You probably know the answer if you don't. But what was finished? The work that Christ had come to this earth to do was finished. Jesus' suffering for our sin on the cross was finished. It was accomplished. Jesus had taken the punishment for sin that was and is due to us. That work on the cross was finished. 
it'll never be repeated. In fact, the Bible tells us that. Point seven, and very important. Just like David came out triumphant over Goliath, Jesus came out victorious over death. Luke 24 tells us how Jesus rose from the dead three days later and that he drew near to two and went with them. He also came later in that book at the end of Luke 14 and tells us he came to his disciples on the shore. If you trust Jesus and ask for forgiveness, he will draw near to you tonight. You will feel his presence. Remember, Jesus rose victorious. He is alive and he is wanting you to come to him today. You know, I don't serve a dead saviour tonight. I serve a living saviour. And for the Christians that are listening, remember, you're serving a living saviour. We have so much uh, to be joyful for. Christ has won the battle. If there's one thing in your life you need to be worried about, it's your sin. It's your sin that separates you from God, and it will for eternity if you don't trust him and ask for forgiveness. It is your sin that will keep you out of heaven. But Jesus has taken the punishment for it. He has shed his blood for you. Trust him tonight. With that, I close. And thank you for listening. If you have any questions, then please speak to me or get in touch. You can get in touch through uh, Facebook, uh, the website. Uh, my number's on the website as well, www godsmission.com would love to see you saved and ready for heaven that's why we're putting these gospel messages out each sunday night you know you know you all know psalm 23 penned by david and i wondered this week as i looked at this i'm sure he was thinking of his time in the valley facing the laugh the giant when he wrote yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You can be accepted into the family of God tonight if you turn to Jesus. And I, I trust that after you do that, and I trust that you do it, and you'll be able to read the words of the psalmist in chapter 23. It'll be completely different to you. You'll be able to read that verse. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Amen. And thank you for listening.